Yeah, okay. so just to make sure that that happens because you know, the booster club is looking to order and stuff like that. So. Sounds good. I'm Can you guys sure speak up? Sorry. This is a very echoey room. It's not your fault. Yeah. You know, you don't know what to do. Yeah. 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 Plenty of to do. We just assumed there were more people coming. Yeah. Thank you. What's happening with the station? Yeah. Uh, so. okay. the update. And then um, hiring update. Uh, and then the superintendent's report for discussion. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, oh, I have a clarification on WRU. Right thing to do. 
I would suggest that there's a sense of urgency of deciding this because there's a painting crew that's about to start work here. And I don't know uh, exactly what their pace is going to be, but if there are things that need to be identified, we ought to decide what they are now. Uh, whether that be with students uh, or this board or whoever it is, uh, once they get going. Uh, and they, I don't think they've started yet, although I know that there's going to be a paint delivery tomorrow. Uh, and that's Jim Hewitt who's doing the work. So. Are both the gyms being redone, lawyers? Uh, yes, absolutely. And that'll happen in probably the middle to late July, from what I understand. I know there was a rumor out there, and that's not true. Yeah. They're going to be done, both places. Yes, Jennifer. I'm not sure if this, I, I didn't hear everything that was in earlier. So, yeah, my question is the mask guys. Um, I'm on the booster club, and we need to look forward with buying here. So it's here I don't know what the status of the mascot logo is. I know that we are trying to, to buy soccer uniforms now so that we'll have them in time for, uh, and since Mr. Uh, Romeo has gone, um, I've asked Lindsay, Lindy uh, Stetson to kind of take over that. We're hoping that, uh, I would suggest that we get some of the kids, seniors, together to try to pick those uniforms, uh, at least on the varsity level. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get those kids together, but I think if they knew that that's what it was, they'd probably come in and, and help with that. I'm not talking about the uniforms. I'm actually talking about the gear that we want to sell to all of our okay. The kitty. So I thought the cap, I thought yeah. that the letter and the mascot was selected. Yeah. The giant. This was that market. Right, this is the marketing committee. We have two members that are on, one's on the, the Bethel Booster Club and one's on our Silver Booster Club, and they both said that everything's kind of in a holding pattern until we hear back, so that's why we haven't been. Oh, I think, was it Mrs. Hugerart that was doing it? No, it was the other, the other art teacher I think, that was finalizing it or something. I think she was the oh, okay. Yeah. Is, it, is there some amount of time of proof to work on that? Is that wrapped up or no longer? What are you asking? If there's summer work time approved for continued work on that or has it been wrapped up since the year ended last week, right? Um, summer work time of the committee? No, of the person that we was working on the map. Yeah. I just Oh I don't know. I have no idea. I mean my hope we can get that. They're raising money for that. So if I'm sure, I'll just check with her and see if she's submitted okay. that. Um, because that, um, all, those pay, all that paperwork came through um, with all this chair and that committee. Okay. But I'll check with her. So is there a way that we can find out? We're actually meeting again on July 2nd, so we can start picking what we want for air and then put together a, a brochure or a quarter form. You'll contact the teacher. Thank you. Is this, have you all seen that or? Yes. Oh, right. yeah. you all have that. See, our understanding was that was going to be made, at least this was a communication that went to the parents, was that we was going to get made print ready. Yeah. And that I assume is where the gap is. Right. You just don't have anything print ready, and therefore you okay. can't send it. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And I'm more than happy, if Lindy does want some help, I think our booster club would be more than happy to help or even getting kids together. Yeah, help with that piece. So how interesting to make some designs like that haven't tucked away and you would like to get involved. I think actually this is one of the frustrations is that there have been people on deck meeting. Mm -hmm. And there's just feels like there's a really big gap between, okay, we're gonna do this as soon as this, and everyone else is sitting here going, mm -hmm. and when does that happen? And it's just, I, appreciate wanting the communications committee to, to do things and have things pretty formalized. 
but in the absence of communication, you get silence, you get rumors. Um, I think a bunch of us are on the Let's Talk Royalty Facebook page where someone said, they're nodding, I heard that there aren't any AP classes in South Royalton, and I think like every one of us who knew went, and then I think it was my daughter who actually who went in first and was like, I'm going to take two AP classes, uh, and tried to phrase it as positively as she could, but rumors live in silence, and I think I speak for quite a few people here when I say we get frustrated because the Wildcats newsletter is great, but it's one piece of information once a week, and it usually focuses on one topic, and there's a lot of stuff going on. And so, you know, I come here once a month, and I learn things. And the, the kids, I don't think anything directly went to the kids before they broke for summer, aside from there's going to be a couple Wildcats newsletters that are going to be mailed, which again, is great, but they're once a month, and it's not, there's no back and forth incorporated in that. In the notes from our last special meeting, there was links to all the different um, things that the committees have been creating, and one of them was a decisions list. And yep. so I was just going to. That was helpful. Did I, I haven't looked at it? So I was going to look at it now and just see if it had anything around logo and finalization. I didn't see anything on that. There was some discussion about painting things around the building. Of course, unfortunately, with the decisions list, you can read and go, OK, I think that means that, but you can't really have the back and forth like we're in here. Mm -hmm. It's really valuable. Right. Well, feel free to contact me you know, any of us individually. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I really do appreciate that. You guys have been very good at, at responding. Anything else? Okay, we have another public comment uh, further down the agenda, so think of anything. We'll be here. Um, approval of minutes. We're all in our packet. Okay. All as one single consent agenda, or do we want to name them by date? So May 15th, May 21st, and June 1. And I seconded. Okay. All in favor of approving those minutes say aye. 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 All right. Opposed? All right, the minutes are approved. Okay, do we have any board comments? We do have a lot of uh, confusion about the name of the district, whether it's White River Unified District or the White River Valley School District. And on the May 20th minutes, we did vote to change the name from WRUD to the WRBSD. So um, just we need to make sure that's actually happening. So Bruce, what, what does that entail? Um, it, it'll have to be, it's a change in the uh, article of agreement, I believe. If, if there has been something since the merger happened, okay. it needs to be redone. And I would think that that is a state board uh, legal type of action that's going to need to happen. I don't know that it needs to happen before July 1, but it will need to happen. So okay. I think if we, as a, as a group, believe that that's what you have to do, uh, we will then uh, have to, to put that forward uh, to the state board. So and that's what we voted to do, yes. Well, I read the articles of agreement. I read that you can, you the board can change the name of the middle school the high school, but you have no authority to change the elementary school. And if, as there's going to be a, a transfer of property coming up as of July 1, right. uh, you're going to have to do something that's true. You can't transfer it to one and not be that one. Right, okay. Because the way I read it, you 
can't be one. You're going to go to, I don't know. Well, I mean, we're all part of the same district, though. The two schools, the elementary schools are still part of the same district. I understand that. That's not what the articles of agreement say, Royalton Elementary and Bethlehem. I believe they say something like that, but they, what the, the, the authority that you have is to change the name of the middle school and the high school, not of the elementary school. Right, but we didn't change the name of the elementary school. What so we're talking about right now. Who do we give the property to? What's that? Who do you, it's the district who that we you're giving the property to. So, so you're giving the Bethel Elementary School to the White River Unified District or the White River Valley. So what I'm what I'm hearing Dave say is that if we're in flux over the name change, that it might slow the legal process of transferring the property because there's no entity to transfer the property to, which will be the new district. And if it complicates that process, then I feel like maybe we need to, even though I agree with you about the name of the district, but I think for practical reasons, might make sense to leave it White River Union District in the short term and reverse that stance. I think it is confusing, um, but I think at this point, complicating things more. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. We would be able to change it at a future time after the transfer. Our attorney will be with us tomorrow night in the main meeting that we're going to have. Our meeting tomorrow night to approve or not the union agreements with the support staff and the classroom staff. Is it possible? Not positive folks, yes. I'm just. <laughs> so, she will be here to explain uh, the path to follow the get the board of Anything else? I guess I'd like to have a discussion with the board of 
about the possibility of using the food service director that's currently at Bethel, Willie, uh, to also direct the food service program here next year. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, we would have to figure out how to organize that. I don't have a suggestion for you, and I really haven't had a discussion with him about this, uh, but I would, and I think it's a more efficient, I think we could be doing uh, buying on a, on a grander scale. Uh, we can make sure that uh, both uh, buildings are uh, working on the same things. Uh, for example, example uh, recycling and uh, composting. And uh, also the, their, the menus are similar. Uh, Willie has a really good reputation. He's done a really good job at Bethel. And he's very familiar with the growth of the community as well. So that's just uh, something I'd like to talk with you about at some point, whether we do it or if you want me to open it up and, and uh, do that, I'd be happy to do that. But I, I think it would be a really good step in the right direction to try to have you talked to Willie at all about conceptually about how that would work? No, I thought it was important that I have a conversation with you guys. Because I'd be curious how feasible he feels that is as one sole person, you know, on two campuses. Well, you know, he knows that Willie's leaving, uh, but I haven't taken that step because I really felt it was important that I discuss it with you guys. Uh, I would be open to having a conversation with Mr. Walker and talk about how it would work and if it is feasible. I think for us to plan it without talking about where it would be. Mm -hmm. And are there people here who could be brought into the conversation so that conceptually they can start to flesh out what it might look like? Well, I mean, we have people who are kitchen staff. We have kitchen staying. staff that are now full time. Uh, yeah. Here, um, we uh, and we also, um, of course, have probably around, around the equivalent number in, in Royalton. So I don't know whether we have to beef up the staff with, with the leading because Willie, if he were to get this position, would have to oversee both, which means he mm -hmm. could be two places at one time. Right. Uh, we may need a little more support in each of the kitchens uh, so that there is that support when he's not in. They're directing, but I really think it would be a, a great step. Uh, he's very talented. Yeah. yeah, Bruce, at the full board level, you're asking also to have some type of food service manager. Um, so if Royalton would, if a Royalton couple will have to pay for that position also. Well, that was put on hold, so I'm not. That won't be coming tomorrow night. Not that. Well, I'd like to. I'd like to oversee have have the whole program overseen at some point, but the board didn't want to consider it or wanted me to get more information before it came back to them. So I, I haven't done anything with that. This was just about three or four weeks ago that we talked about it. Uh, we have, we went throughout the SU. We have kind of haves and. And places where it's very difficult, very expensive, and others that are doing fairly well. Uh, these two communities do fairly well. Uh, so I, I would like to have somebody oversee the whole thing, um, but I don't have any plans to bring it back to the board just yet. This, I didn't expect this from Linda. Quite frankly, it kind of shocked me to win, because she didn't really let on to anybody that she was going to do this. Uh, at least not to me, and uh, so I'm kind of dealing with it as we go, and I just think this would be a, a very nice step. Uh, I agree. Chances. I think that I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't this district, uh, this consolidated district wouldn't have a manager, and then on top of that, be paying 40% of the manager for the whole last year. So, I mean, I told you where we are. Yeah, I know. That's why I asked. So we agree that you'll have a conversation with Willie. And I also probably have to give you some structure. Yeah. Um, 
how he would foresee what what he can do for us. Right. If you're good with that. Yeah. I mean, the other alternative is to put it out, and uh, I don't, you know, I, if you want me to do that, I will. But I, I think we have a good option right here. I think if he feels like it's too much, or if he's not excited about it, then that's our next best option. But it feels like if he would, was willing to do it, then that makes things simple. Would it be something where we would ask him to come to the next board we meeting could, to could, have discussion? And I mean, would that be? Part it would be of, a yeah. really good. It would almost be. I mean, I think we'd have a month to talk about well, that. It looks like we'd have to have a special meeting because the July 17th struck out and we're planning on suggesting this little bit. Anybody else? Anyway, it seems appropriate for him to converse with the board and kind of have dialogue. Then I just throw it out there that we try to have that opportunity. Do you want to have a July meeting? If you want to, we would. I think well, there's a lot going on. I think there's a, a lot happening. Um, I don't know if the Royalty Board used to do this, but we have been doing for the last few years a full day retreat at one point in the summer just to make sure things are fair. And I feel like if we can make that happen, we should because there's a lot happening. Well, I don't have a lot on my dance card right now. Okay. So if you guys we send a doodle want to do this, and see uh, we can do it. To be there. Yeah. So I'll send a doodle to all of them figure it out. Just to clarify a little bit on the food services thing, um, you're saying that we wouldn't put out a disposition like Willie wouldn't be able to do both. Like we're basically taking a rethink. Willie would basically be a manager of local campuses, and that would kind of take him out of time. Well, he's certainly not going to, knowing Willie, he's not going to just sit back and give orders, he's going to do stuff. So and he's going to do basically what his job currently is, plus ordering and stuff. For yeah, he just oversee the bigger. So then you would still need to hire somebody to replace them. Perhaps. I, I don't know that sitting here. I don't know what the capacity is of right now. Um, so I, that'll be a discussion item, I think. What do you foresee the structure being going forward? Because it almost seems like we put it in a management position and we have to hire two more people in the kitchen. And those are, the kind of, those are the kinds of questions we could ask Willie if he's foreseeing this whole thing. You know, what are the other people that he needs underneath them, and what what kind of responsibilities do we have an idea of what our investment is for for pay and all that? Mm -hmm. And I think if he agreed to do it, it would be important to to talk to the people who are also in the kitchen and who are doing the work every day because they might have insight that we can't possibly answer. I feel like Willie has really creative marketing techniques, mm -hmm. and he, he has like guest servers, like senior yeah. students come in and serve, rather than have a hired support staff person just to be in the line serving. Mm -hmm. Right. He brings kids in, he brings them to a university, and we have really creative ways. So, uh, you all, if you know Ginger, who's our new business uh, manager, um, mm -hmm. she's also happy in her last year life served as the food service guru so she uh, has been working with all the food service personnel in the whole SU around this and has a tremendous amount of training and uh, works with the state uh, so uh, it's lucky that you're here I guess uh, for that discussion she really does know the topic Um, oh, I have a, uh, an item for non-public, and I'd like to uh, have Ginger talk to you about this uh, retirement, uh, this uh, sports staff retirement issue, because there really is a Bethel Royalton issue. <coughs> they're both a little different in how they address this, and I asked her to come to explain it to you, because that's not something I'm well versed in. So, both the schools are currently on the Mafia's overtime system, the Weaver system. Uh, Bethel is a member of Group A, and Royalton is a member of Group B. And really the big difference is the 
percentages of the employee versus employer match. Um, Numerous does require that one entity be on one plan. So one location is going to have to switch to the other. Um, what are the differences between group A and group B? So group A has an employee percentage of 2.625 lot of numbers and an employer match of 4.125 and then Royal Pin has an employee percentage of 5% is that group B? Group yeah. B is Royal Pin, yes. Employee percentage of 5%, employer match of 5.625%. 5.625. So the more generous plan is plan B that Royal Pin is currently on more conservative plan would be group A. Like I said, Beamers doesn't allow one entity to be on two different plans. So it's a decision that needs to be made. Um, and they won't let us submit as of July 1st, they won't let us submit any contributions on behalf of the support staff. So it's not a huge volume of people through the summer, but it is all your custodians and anybody that's working in the office. Isn't that something that's negotiated in the contract? We didn't. I just asked Dave that. We did not discuss it during negotiations. And probably the union should be brought into the discussion. Uh, but uh, it was not something that we talked about at all. So this is the support staff retirement only? Yes, only support staff. So what's the, the bottom line look like? How much money is it going to cost us yeah, to do this? I have been with another to see what the cost will be right now. Is this a one shot number or an employee allowed to up to 2.6? No, nope, it's a set percentage. Set. So, so if you call the, the royalty plan better, but they have to, the employee has to put in 5 and the employer 5.6. Yeah. But in the in the Bethel plan, the employee puts in two point something and the employer puts in twice as much. But they still have less money. But they still have less money when they actually retire. But generally in the end. As long as they put in more money. So they have to. Well, they have to. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I wish we could have this conversation with the people who will be impacted because I feel like making this decision could take more money out of somebody's paycheck, right, that they're expecting to get and, and there, potentially budgeting. Is there any way to pull those that would be impacted by this to find out what the majority choice would be? One of the, one of the, uh, one of the things that um, we can do um, is, is call uh, Bob Raskovich, who's a union rep, and, and uh, have a discussion about this being left out of the conversation. We don't have a lot of time, but uh, because they're going to get their first, if we approve things tomorrow night, they're going to get their first payment on it after, right after July 1st. This, Absolutely, it was an oversight, I guess. Um, it wasn't until Ginger brought it to me uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, we didn't realize that we had never talked to you. You didn't realize it. We didn't realize it. So, uh, I think it's ever been in the contract. Yeah, I mean, is it, is it okay. one contract now for the staff? It will be if it's approved tomorrow night, yes. And then, I mean, you know, this, was this previously a negotiated item in their contract? Sure. Or? No. no. That's the issue. It's never been. Never been even so I guess from that standpoint, it could be imposed, but we don't want people beginning the contract with ill feeling. Yeah. You know about things either. So. This is a transition period of time um, when a fund adjustment change happens with someone's retirement account um, with any kind of employer. There's some allotted time to announce it or required announcement time so people can digest it. As the funds between the two may be different, um, the fund investments may not 
not be different. Um, the change won't happen overnight, but there may be a minimum required number of days to provide notice to the staff and a required minimum number of days to actually make the change. Knowing healthcare experience um, with the teachers this past year, we may want to pay attention to those dates um, as Beamers is going to have to abide by those. And so this may not be a rush element. We might have to adhere to those time frames. Yeah, I, I think we, we should get the union involved in this and do it by the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that won't throw any wrinkles into the current rest of the contract that we're trying to solve. And, and uh, we can do it in an upfront and open way. So the only difference, like basically it's a 1.5% difference from our point of perspective. Yeah. So, and do we have any like idea about the total supports that salary in Bethel? Well, I have just, I've sent all of you the, the proposals um, for tomorrow night so that you can look at both the support staff and the proposed teacher contract. I, well, think I have a radio should, call. Okay. You should have gotten those uh, today. If you have like a total number, number of support staff salary, then yeah. I think we're only talking about like five thousand dollars. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. We can write anything what's in the contract. So, right. Which, mm -hmm. which, what I was going to say is I'm fine with the right. The right. To do. So. right. I'm wondering, just given the contentious nature of what's happened with not going with future planning and now data path and how that comes up at the meetings that we've had with teachers, I'm just feeling a little anxious about potentially missing that July 1 deadline and the perception that we didn't do our due diligence around this piece of things. Um, so I think that it is important to reach out to Bob Raskovitz, but I think that if we're not getting answers in a timely manner, then we need to have a plan to move that makes sense. We talk about it. Uh, is there a chance that, you, that Bob might get back to you tomorrow before our meeting? Uh, perhaps. I saw it today. But, uh, the MOU literally took months, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh. I mean, so I don't. A large portion of my life. Yeah. Stay in the from where we are. So. Yeah. See if you can talk to him before tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob wrote this, and it's in this part in this contract about that With each eligible employee shall participate in the Vermont Dreamers system each board participating employee shall participate in either group A or group B Rochester Bethel Stockbridge shall participate in group A Sharon Group WRBSU shall participate in group B okay so this is this came from the okay so it says he didn't see that part coming either so it sounds like the decision is already in writing no, because yeah, it's not about that specific part of that. One and three, then only one, right? So the WRDSU can't be one and three, so the Bethlehem Road and the Bethlehem Road and the Bethlehem Road only matters, just the WRDSU. And it designates who will be in group A and who will be in group B. So I think that says the WRDSU is in group A, that's not the question. Does it still show Bethlehem A? But they don't exist anymore. It'll just be the. Well, all I'm saying is that this. Yes, we can buy some people that should be done. Right. Yep. Now we have to that's fix it. Though. Yeah. As of July 1st, that was going to be. As the WRBSU. Right. So those two parts go away. So that's where the answer is. 
Yeah. That's how it's possible you can read it that way. But I think that that the supervisor needs to go to the special ed staff Oh, okay. And All right. We need to clarify this just to be able to. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, yeah. Yep. Sorry, I was getting yeah. confused with it. Again, those acronyms that we got to clear. Straighten out. Education. There's two different contracts. This is the consensus right here. That's right. Yeah, but no, he's right. This, I thought that was the. That's the supervisor. Yeah, that's the other thing. Okay. okay. That was your own. All right. Paul Walker. See if you get an answer. Like soccer games start at four. Right. They, sometimes an hour and a half. They're getting out of school already at 1.30. Okay. So they're going to miss two hours of school. 
I just think that there's a lot of different pieces that. Well, what was you? I, I'm not on the transportation committee. I as mean, far as the, I know. Yeah, what do you? I mean, as far as like the elementary schools going with home with their siblings, they could maybe come to the One Planet. Yeah, if they had if they had someone here to monitor them. A lot of times. In the One Planet mean, program, like yeah. they have you know, kids here until five. But you have to pay for that. But you have to pay for that. So if they had like someone that but could sit with the kids. Scholarship. Can you just clarify what you said that there was a survey sent out? The only thing that I received was just a couple of days ago in regards to someone would be calling, asking about, you know, what child I have on the bus. Right. So is that the survey you're talking about? Right. Okay. And okay. see what the travel, you know, where the bus is going to travel from here. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that we're talking about the same survey. So. Yeah. Yeah, Tammy. So, um, with that transportation, um, will that mean that the kids that go to RT, uh, CC will go from Bethel to South Royalton and then from South Royalton to RT, CC? If the bus from Bethel <coughs> is taking high school kids to South right. Royalton, Will the kids have to ride to South Royalton and then get on the bus again to go to RTCC? I would think the Royalton bus would pick them up, take them on the way out and through. And some of this is, you know, Butler has to work out on it too. But, okay. Um, and then vice versa, the one that goes to Hartford go stop that one goes down. So. Okay, because I didn't know if South Royalton would <coughs> report the. the high schoolers' attendance here, you know, before they let them go to RTCC. So I didn't know if that was going to be a problem. I, there are some there are some people uh, questioning me already. I have no idea yeah. um, about uh, going to South Royalton and then coming back by, you know, Bethel to go to RTCC. They just thought that was a little ridiculous. You know, to yeah. do that, but then I mean, the attendance can... thing, I wasn't sure how that would work out. So, you have to account for all your students. We should all have chips. <laughs> well, you would think, yes. you would think with the technology today that um, RTCC could, I know they must take attendance of kids that get there, could let South Royalton know, you know, so and so didn't come or so and so is here. Mm -hmm. I mean, technology is right. huge. Thing, right, it would be better communication. But I think so, because we don't need bodies to literally land no. somewhere to say that they've arrived and then right. go the opposite right. direction. Right, that was yeah. the concern of the case. Parents. Yes. Okay. Parents, actually. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the stadium sign finished lines. Basically, the only way you can do it and not double the amount of buses that you can use. Nancy? My hometown, um, the high school and middle school were first because most parents, it's so early that most parents are still there for the little kids. And it worked out fairly really well. That was a part. I think we want considerations to be able to transfer this. You have all the middle school and high school students over there.
the high school students at various times have had very tightly circumscribed paths. It was like, you're going to go into the gym, or you're going to be, I don't know. It, it seemed like it was a lot more of a big deal than it had to be, um, but I'm just going to leave that aside. Uh, but I think one thing when you guys do have these considerations is if the kids are going to be waiting around for 15, 20 minutes between bus A and bus B, depending on what goes on, because there are bad days, there are snow days, there's someone who gets right on time to some royalty and then you wait for the kids to start or vice versa with middle school. Just, you know, what to do with those kids to make them feel like they can do things, whether they have a study hall or a place to chill or in the gym, but not just one place and dear God, don't look in an elementary school student because that would be weird, which is what happened for about a year and a half and I still don't understand that. Um, but just in general, you know, thinking about not just moving little dots here and there, but the fact that they are elementary school children, middle school children, high school children, they'll get bored, they'll get frustrated if, you know, there's a snowstorm, but it's not bad enough to come to school, but the number eight bus gets stuck in a ditch, what, what then? And those kind of patterns. And I think sometimes that, that piece gets forgotten, so I just want to make sure it's somebody who brought it up. Can I ask, with the later end of school time, are we pushing actually later, causing students to be out later? I mean, our school ended at 240, and that was, or 250, that was pretty late as it was, especially playing sports and stuff. And then I do agree with the uh, bus times. I mean, that's a lot of school to miss, especially the fact that we're going to be traveling further because we don't have schools around here to play for sports. I mean, that seems like a pretty intense situation to be in as a student. What other ways that you can think about it as a way to keep kids in class later before they leave? And maybe a little later getting back after an event, especially basketball, that's long into the night a lot of times. As if it's late into the night. Yeah, it is. So, I think, Ed, I think the committee's trying to be sensitive to all of that um, and balance everything. Um, from, from what I've heard about the discussions that are taking place, they're trying to be sensitive to all those angles and reach some kind of healthy compromise uh, for everyone. So, do we have a, how do we know who's going to be in charge of transportation now? Who's in charge of assigning somebody to is that your job, Bruce? I guess I can find out. Because I haven't been in the meetings, but I think I'll be the first to be in the meetings. Yeah. Well, maybe. We could, I mean, I know Owen's going to be at the meeting tomorrow night, too, but it would be nice to have some resolution to know that there is a point person and that that's being, again, like that whole decision list of who's, who's the point person, what's the timeline of getting it done. It seems like this is another one we need to get on top of. Um, I, my understanding was they were pretty much in agreement about what needed to happen now. The, the last meeting had kind of resolved a lot of the questions. Yeah. So um, I missed the last meeting. I have to. But no parents have been contacted. I, I had scheduled it. No, because it was only for Friday. Okay. 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 And then we came back on Monday at the last meeting. So I missed it because I can't change my schedule. Well, well, let's just say that tomorrow when we meet, there's more individuals that are involved with this week. We can make sure that even if it's already taken care of, there should be someone that we should be able to talk to for clarification and action items. And, I mean, I think you have to be careful. Tomorrow's a full board meeting. It's not a White River Valley board meeting. We can't make decisions tomorrow night. You have to warn them. Right. So you can't, like... I mean, I think that's something that has to be. I don't think it's necessarily a full board. Like, Tomorrow, but we do have a special yeah. meeting that we have to have next Tuesday. We could tack on policy items if we needed to, and additional it, things. And it is right now. The only ones that are left are Major uh, Owen and Andy Goldberg and Rob Butler. Okay. Well, we just need to make sure all this. Yeah, just, I don't think this needs to be a board decision. Like, this is kind of like a scary. Right. Yeah, I was just saying we're going to see Owen tomorrow. We can like say, hey, what's up? And, but but I think it should be formalized 
that it's okay, in and of itself. Okay, I'm going to read the latest email. As far as the transportation committee goes, I would plan on an 8 o'clock start for elementary, and we will have to have a delayed start for the middle and high school. As far as the end times go, I think that uh, that is less a transportation committee issue and more a contractual issue. Looking at the former OWSU contract on page 20, it looks like the student day would have to be would have to end uh, latest uh, at 3 p.m. for elementary. Looking at the form, former Windsor Northwest SU contract, the day would need to end uh, at the latest 2:50. Uh, I can see, uh, and I can see all change in the new contract is on the horizon. I have no idea what the language states about the length of the teacher's work day. We got the new uh, supposed agreement, and I sent it out to board members uh, last, this morning, I think, so that they can read getting ready for tomorrow night. So we, everybody has a copy of the proposed uh, teacher agreement uh, and support staff agreement, so we can uh, look at the length of the day. But that came um, from Andra. Uh, let see if there's any other updates. Um, there's nothing else that's new, I don't I believe. So we're looking at an 8 o'clock start for next year for the elementary. And what did I say? Delayed start for middle and high school. I know it doesn't specify the time of that. Mm -hmm. So, sounds like there are still questions about that time, and I'm concerned that community members are going to feel somewhat blindsided in terms of childcare, et cetera, if we don't communicate very publicly about things that will feel like really big changes. Um, so is the Transportation Committee, you may have just said this, but I was taking notes, um, meeting again soon? Um, we don't try to get Okay. But I'll, I'll find out. Okay. Uh, All right. Do uh, you want to go over uh, the review of property transportation? Documents and yes, those things. that's next on our agenda, actually. I think there was still. Um, oh, the hiring update. Hiring update, um, yeah. I can give you what I. I mean, the, the ad closes for the co curricular tomorrow. We have um, between 11 and 14 candidates. Um, you know, uh, I think we're looking at trying to get the original committee back together again for both students and for staff, uh, or for parents and community members. Um, I, I had a conversation with Reed today about that, and uh, my suggestion to him was to keep the process that we were using in place for the, next, for the rest of it, because the people that have been at the other meetings have some continuity around you know, the considerations that they have. Um, the, um, science position, there's there's some people that have uh, we've had a hard time time attracting the, the robotics and something else uh, for the science position because that was going to be one of the classes that was, was going to be one of the eight Pardon? Was it one of the eight No, okay, that's, that's, that's been filled. There's one science position that's been filled. Right. Um, and she, uh, she's been in toward the building, been in the classrooms, looked around. Uh, so uh, we're very pleased with that. Um, the, other, uh, the other science position has a robotics class and it has something else. Just computer science. Computer science class uh, in it. And where the Reed's question to me was whether we could split that out and, and try to have two halves, basically, instead of combining that all into one um, and perhaps we're going to try advertising it that way 
because it doesn't seem to be that the people that are applying can do all of those things well. And uh, so uh, the other um, question uh, was uh, social studies, and I know that that is progressing, um, that position. Uh, I know in the elementary school, we will be getting back together to try to find our music teacher. We had had a music teacher that we offered the position to, and she refused it. And uh, we are uh, back in the hunt for a music teacher, and that's an elementary position for here uh, for next year. Um, uh, other ones you might have questions about? The math. Um, we have uh, we have a lead on a person. There, there's not a lot of them around, and. Uh, Reed updated me on a plan that he's working out with a particular person that he's been uh, checking references on, and uh, I think we'll we'll have a little more information about that tomorrow or the next day. That's going to be a quick turnaround. I don't if we find somebody that we really like. There are a couple people that are out there that we think we might find them someone a little better than what we're seeing, and uh, so we haven't pulled the trigger on that one. Uh, or made a move. Uh, we think that uh, we will uh, see where this person that he's talking to me about is. But there are a couple candidates out there. It's not like we're desperate. But it's getting late. <laughs> so uh, there's a need to move quickly with positions like that, especially. How about the, um, I'm sorry, Bethel? Is another teacher just? Um, well, there's a there's a uh, an elementary uh, position or two. Um, we have uh, filled a preschool position uh, as of today, actually, and uh, that's that's been done. Um, and I think uh, uh, I, I I spent some time with Owen today, and uh, he had a pretty good handle on the, the battle positions are, are pretty much done. Um, With that, uh, the hiring for that coming up, uh, with it being getting late and soccer is like two months away, less than two months away. Um, I know at the varsity level, uh, we're supposed to be doing preseason, and that's usually a week, week and a half long uh, in August. And putting a co curricular hiring so late, are we going to have enough time to make sure that we have the coaches by that time so that we have the preseason? I feel like the preseason is important with this whole consolidation and new players coming and not knowing each other very well. I think it should actually be extended in the personal opinion. We've got the ads out for all the coaches. They're, they're, they're out. And uh, it's one of the things I asked uh, Mr. Romeo to do before he left was to get a schedule together for the games you're going to be playing in the preseason scrimmages you might be playing and also uh, the coach coaching ads out there. So I I know they're out there. I know there's a couple applications for them. And uh, we really like to have that co-curricular person be involved in picking them. Uh, that's really important. Uh, so I I guess that's the best I can tell you. So if those ads for coaches are out there, we're gonna try to make the turnaround. Uh, I'm working with Lindsay, Lindy uh, to, try to get uh, us some choices for uniforms and then ask the kids to come in and look at some of those choices uh, for both of the, I, I guess I would say probably seniors. Uh, they certainly have the most invested in this, so, uh, so just a thought anyway. When, does, when do you expect that hiring to wrap up? Um, Right. Pretty quickly. I mean, if I can get, if we can get, it closes tomorrow. I know there haven't been a whole lot of new applications. There were four new applications over the weekend, actually. Um, you know, we're, what we're going to try to do is narrow, uh, probably tomorrow, and then get the committees together to go through the process. Um, I mean, there's some people that I recognize uh, on the applications that are not people that I would. Uh, think would be what we want. 
that always is the case, but I recognize a couple of them. So, uh, so the, the committee, the first time around, was involved in like the final interview process, in a sense. So, uh, is, are, are you guys uh, going to kind of do the first vetting and then narrow it down well, to a few candidates for the committee? Well, there's, there's people with no experience. There's people who um, I know where they've been last and know a little bit about them. We will try to narrow it down so that the committee doesn't have to look at 14 people, that they might be able to look at five or three or something like that. Um, that's what I mean by narrowing, um, you know. Uh, and that's what happened last time. Uh, well, actually, we went in-house last time. It really wasn't that way. That's what we were planning on. So, so I'm on that committee, and I just was wondering, are, are you thinking that you're going to try to get us together like next week? Soon, yes, because all the things that yeah, have just been the, said are on my mind. And yeah. So it would be great to, to send an email out and just say, we'll be, you know, that it's happening soon so we can all be kind of preparing for that. Well, that'll be a reason that will do that, and probably he'll do that after tomorrow. So ideally, we'll know who that person is by the 29th. Okay. 29th of June. Correct. Yes. yes. Okay. At the last steering committee meeting, they were talking about having some of the fall decisions made by the current meetings. Is that still the point? That's correct. The schedule has been put together by Frank and, and Lindy. But as far as like setting the coaches. Uh, well, we can't hire those coaches until they apply. We've gotten the ads out for them to apply. So that's been done. Uh, the uniform question, as I said, is another thing that we want. So if, if the process drags on past the 29th or something, we can still have those decisions made. Sure. Well, Lindy's the only one still. Lindy, I'm going to, I've told Lindy I'll pay her to come back here and right. do what she needs to do. I mean, it's important that we have some continuity on this. And she's perfectly willing. As you know, she's going to be a principal for us next year in the Rochester Bethel or Rochester uh, Stockbridge combined uh, right. thing. So she she's here and she's vested. Can I make, Can I just make one statement? Sorry, I think that we're combining that it's important when you hire coaches and co curricular and you, that you look at like. Of course, you know, some worlds of people might love one coach, and Bethel people, like you look at as being a new entity. Right. Like, I personally would love to see some women coaches. We never have women coaching women. Yeah, I mean, and I, <laughs> I hope when you look at that, you look at maybe nobody knows anybody, and that's great because no one's gonna know if you're Bethel or you're Royalton or you're, you know, I think that's Except important because I think that really bothers a lot of kids, you know, like, they're, they're worried about it. Yeah. yeah. All right, anything else about hiring updates? Okay. Oh, just one last thing. I think we need to, like, I know the science teacher position is filled, so can we get, like, a notification to the oh. communication with the uh, community that that's happening? Yeah, uh, that's yeah, the yeah um, and I probably should have brought her resume on school spring. Uh, uh, she uh, has got a quite extensive uh, background, worked in the uh, mining industry, actually, and she has a, a background in ge a lot of geology work. And I don't know whether any of you have seen this, but uh, her, her information. But we can certainly get some of that sent out to you and uh, to the community. Her name and some of that. Uh, okay. so. Thank you. So that brings us to the review of property transfer documents, which I think we were all emailed. I sent it out to everybody yeah. when I got it from David Ruth, who's an attorney working through Spitzel Page and Fletcher. Mm -hmm. uh, so you probably have seen it, I would think. Um, right. He has been researching uh, the status of property documents both of the towns and I don't know whether we copied it in your file or I just sent it to you. Yeah, it's in the packet. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, I mean it looks good to me. I read it. I'm not an expert.
transport and property transfers. Are there any questions about this? I think we have to stick with White River and the district for the sake of this. Yeah, I want this to flow smoothly. Do we need to formally change everything back to White River Unified District in the future we change it? I think we probably should, just for the sake of process. Okay. Right. Okay. I make a motion that we change our official district name to White River Unified District. Sorry. Okay. All in favor of changing the name of the district back to White River Unified District, um, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. okay. So that's official. Um, questions about the language in this property transfer document. But it looks good to me. Seems what we're looking for is the approval of the board to allow Lisa to sign this at the board chair. Okay. And it'll have to be notarized. All right. <coughs> Make a motion that we uh, have Lisa Floyd uh, sign on behalf of the board as board chair. Second. All right. Any discussion? Yes. 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 Right. Right. The current board chair's name is on there. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. So we need to authorize Dave Eddy to sign the one from Bethel. Yeah. And Christine Hudson. Yeah, I've got some concerns about it, but we can talk about okay. it. Okay. I mean, we can talk about it here, we can talk about it at that. World so we'll need to withdraw the motion. And I, I think it might be wise for us to talk about it here because. Right. So um, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous on this. I mean, this gets into the alumni field. It gets into, the, I mean, I, I feel, and it says like forever. Like in the articles of agreement, it says that if the school doesn't want it, then it would. Like I feel like I need to have at least a select board look at it. I mean that's how I feel. I mean so this is all stuff that's currently owned by the school district. No, but the, so did you get our email about what? No. Okay, so I can just read you what the lawyer wrote. Um, he wrote that ours is a little different because. The school doesn't own the alumni or the whole field. The town does. Right. So you would have to come like, to some agreement with the town. So, oh, right here. I just feel, uh, you know, and then we have, uh, we had a legal issue a few years back about where the fence line is out here, there's access into that field for a couple of houses that can go out there, so we have to leave the lane open. I mean, I just kind of feel like it's a lot for me to sign. Not. I think the idea of it, though, is that you're taking any any covenances that are currently on our district, okay. or current district, is transferred to our new district. So that's what you're signing, is that you're, okay. the current district is giving up those claims, and now we have all those. So all the issues right. that you raised should still be transferred. So I don't you know maybe what you need to do. Will you read this? I'll read it. Christine, what? you're the chair and you need to come with this. So Yeah, I mean I did run it by the town clerk, uh, the select board lady, and she basically said that you guys will have to go in front of the select board for any um, use of fields and like that. that part makes Isn't sense. That what currently she happens? That part. Right, because the school district can't pass that on. Correct. Like liability, like if there's someone hurt in the alumni field, I I don't know how it honestly works. It's been we've been doing this forever. Jen, you might know someone. Uh, yeah. We brought it up in November when we were fighting about this over in Rochester that it's not owned by the Royalton School District. 
Okay. Neither and is that, the whole property. Correct. Or the carpenter field, all of right. which, all of which are readily available to be used. And the attorney said he would take care of it, and it would just be an agreement. And what has been passed on is no agreement. So that can't be, I guess what I want to say is that can't be lost. That has to be. Well, like, so for instance, the, the big baseball scoreboard was a gift from the Lions for someone who lives in Loyalton. And the, the wife's already called me. Are you guys paying that? I'm like, I don't know. Well, I want it left the way it is. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. That's on the alumni field. It's on the alumni field. So. That's just one thing that, you know, it, so it's like a memorial for, for the baseball coach that coached here. What's his name? Uh, Marty Adams. Yeah. Yeah, was doing that. Yeah. Was covering over a name or something like that. Yeah, so I just think that I'm just a little <laughs> nervous because I think it's going to be a conversation that someone's going to have to have at the select board also. And I don't know if this is saying that I'm, I'm saying it's okay to do anything. It's not up to me. It's not our property. You can't transfer what you don't own. Exactly. Right. That's why I don't know why it's in this. Where, where on here is it? In the quick claim deed? Yeah, there's two. I only have one in here. Yeah, but where is it? Um, well, maybe it was just, maybe that was just he wrote. He yeah. wrote it. He wrote in the email, maybe. Right. But the other, the other question I had was this, um, which I thought was unusual for legal work, was his use of forever, where it should be sort of referred back to the Articles of Agreement, because isn't there some sort of state thing? Yeah. Yeah, because what if the district went away? Right, if, if eventually they close these schools too that the town gets to buy it back for a dollar plus any blah, blah, blah. So I guess I thought the forever thing was a little odd too, coming from the attorney, that it would refer back to whether it's the state law or whether it was just in the articles of agreement. I think we talked about this in Rochester that night also. When I, I don't think we're talking about notes. the same attorney, the same firm, but a different attorney. Okay. Right, because so, the right of first review. So, if, is, it, so if it's just two questions, two or three questions we have, he can clarify those. At least it still be signed in time. Nobody's not going to sign it. Well, but, can you give me those those questions that you have so that I yeah. can go back to them? Okay, I, I'll forward. What about Ethel? Did you ever say that too? Well, this doesn't, this looks like they own two plots of land, right? On both sides of the road? Yeah. And it looks like it's a pretty strange Pretty strange But does yours say, does it say anything about if the school was not used, if you would sell it back to you? That's in there. That's not in it. It doesn't have to be. Right, so it should refer back to that, though, somehow. I'm just saying, it's just a question. So the question yeah, is I whether think, that's, I think yeah. That the town school district is going to disappear. So the town of South Rose will get that option to buy it back. Right, but the should there be some, some reference yeah. back to the Articles of Agreement or to the state law? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that that's necessary because the legal entity of the Royal Town School District is going to go away. No, so I understand that. Right. I get that. So, but as far as like their release, so the school district, that legal entity is releasing Forever to it's just, do this. and then that is like a separate thing with the town. Okay. But whatever, have the have the. I guess I would just have, would like to ask him that question. Well, that makes sense. Okay, maybe you you're capturing the question. Yeah. 
point is that we're not using the money all at once. We only draw on it if we need Easy. to. Yes. Right. And we pay back quickly. So. Right. It may be that the bank is different, the right. bank's recommendation is different, but we've done this every year. It's a standard procedure for each of the districts. So it's usually you make one. I just want to know how percentage is higher. Isn't there a usual time we just go? I think you guys talked about the like putting money back in, just in the year right away, and then try to take it out again, and then like pay on the second time. Or like that. That's what we had. Yeah. Right. A few so years ago. Right. Is that still I think it was before Bruce's time also. Yeah. yeah. All right. I would entertain a motion to accept this recommendation. Motion by the Labor Board of the Bank District Board to accept the offer of the Community National Bank for tax participation of the amount of $1,691,100. Okay, any second? Any second? Chris? All right. All in favor of accepting this recommendation from David Largo on the tax anticipation note in the amount of um, $1,681,109. Aye. 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 Okay. Anyone opposed? Okay. So that's approved. Okay. Um, June twentieth meeting is next on the agenda. Uh, so I just Tomorrow. sent each of the board members. Uh, there's there's going to be a couple things on the agenda. Most most of the work has to do with the agreements that we're going to talk about uh, together, and then each of the boards are going to uh, go into separate meetings. We're going to suspend the bigger meeting. They're going to go into their own meetings, and then we're going to come back together. They're basically going to think it's the current board that has to work, has to vote on this. But the rest of you need to know what's happening. So you need to be here to hear exactly what these proposals, because the one for support staff is for the current year and next year, mm -hmm. and the one for the teachers is for the current year and the next two years. Okay. So. You're going to be living with whatever is decided tomorrow night, and it's important that you understand all the all the information about it. I believe each of you got a copy today. I, this teachers the teachers uh, agreement was sent twice. The second copy is the one you need to use because there was some typos that uh, Bob Raskovich fixed and then sent me another copy, and I've sent them along to use the. The one you got later today for the for the teacher agreement, the support staff agreement agreements uh, was only sent to you once, and that's the one we're using. I will have hard copies tomorrow night. Not a lot of them, not for everybody, but uh, you know, if you get a chance, you ought to read it. The other thing that we're going to talk about tomorrow night is the whole uh, SU uh, structure shares in the district, which has been a fairly heated topic about. Uh, about that and uh, there was a proposal that I just sent to all of you from Steve Dale uh, to talk about uh, reconfiguring the district. Basically right now uh, the districts have, if uh, all of the districts have that have schools have three votes except uh, Hancock and Granville have one. Um, however, when you combine it's Bethel and Royalton you're going to still have three votes if it goes the way it is, not six. And therefore, the issue at hand has been uh, how does this set Stratford and Sharon, who aren't changing, they're not combining, they have three votes now, they will have three votes going forward, yet yeah, each have three votes. And uh, there's been a concern about uh, the diminishing power voting uh, from Bethel and Royalton especially, and the uh, status quo for those two districts. And uh, 
So and the same thing applies to Stockbridge and Rochester and Chelsea and Tunbridge in this whole configuration going forward. Stratford and Sharon have emerged. They keep their three votes. And that's a change in, you know, in the well, way things are. Who actually gets to vote tomorrow? If, if we currently have three people at the executive level or? The people or, that get to vote are the current boards. The full board. The current boards, not the unified boards, I get it. the current I get it. boards. Okay. The reason the reason that this needs to come to fruition now or why while some of them want it to come to fruition now is because um, on July first, that change happens if you don't take any action. It goes everybody. It goes to three for three Bethel Roy in total, three for Sharon, three for uh, Stratford three for Racha, you know, and it's basically the power structure changes unless you well, interrupt it it's, now. it's not a power thing, okay, okay first I, of all. I, I it's about word. the kids and the money, but when you think about it, and, and believe me, I think we're putting separately or combined, we're putting in most of the money into the SU, so we should have an extra vote at least, but now with the state thing in the works for Sharon and Stratford that they might be picked up and moved out that maybe they shouldn't be voting on this issue. Uh, you don't need to convince I'm, I'm me of anything. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying, yeah, just saying I just have right, it, it's too bad that we got this far that no. the, the, that wasn't. Well, Gio, yeah, until, they, I think I until it happens, I think they've got to vote because it's still a maybe. I get it. I, well, I, I get it. I guess I first would throw that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So we need everybody to be there to vote. Everybody who's on the existing boards. And we also need townspeople to come tomorrow. If, they can, if anybody can come, good day to come so they hear it and they understand it. Because they will say we had no say in it. They had to say it. I think they should at least listen. Gio, Gio, during this process, a lot of our townspeople asked about this, and you said that there was a way that we could petition the state because this had come up during the process of yes, consolidation. And you said, "Oh, don't worry. We'll, it'll, it, the state said we can petition. We can change this." So I know that's, you have a lot to do with the state. That's what we're actually voting on tomorrow, though. Well, if the other towns agree to vote on it, they don't have to agree to vote on it. Well. That's right. If they vote it down, then we can't petition the state. Yeah, I think you can. I yeah. think that, I think our town can. Uh, I, so what what we're voting on tomorrow is is to petition the state. So if we vote to change the representative structure, then we have to petition the state board to allow them to to exempt us from the state law and have us have a different structure. Um, I I. Haven't asked the question yet, but this, the next question I ask: If we don't, if we're not successful tomorrow night, then the next the thing I that I will personally do once I'm no longer a board member is figure out what our legal ramifications are to take it to that level because it's this is just wrong. Right. Okay. So there but is. I, I'm not going to bring that up. I'm not going to threaten right. that tomorrow night. I'm not going to talk about that. So just if the, if they all vote tomorrow night, you just leave it as it is. There is. Because uh, I know I talked to Donna Russo Savage, and she said they're meeting like next week. So this paperwork would yeah. have to be. No, no, uh, no, matter, no matter what happens, as of July 1st, we're going to go down to even even if tomorrow night we vote to change the number of representatives that we have. As of July 1st, we're going to go down to just three. But that's my hope is it's just a temporary stage until we can petition the board to then go back to where we should be. The, uh, as far as the agenda on the state board, this has to go before the state board, but I've been told, uh, even though um, they wanted a proposal yesterday, and we're, of course we're not meeting until tomorrow night, but that they're not going, the state board is not going to argue with whatever we come up with as, as what the structure needs to be, that they are not going to get into it. If they really want it settled, among us, they don't want it. They don't want to have to. Yeah. 
have something that's contentious on the state level. And Steve and, will be able to talk about that tonight? Steve, Steve yeah. will not be here, but I've sent you his yes, was, his information yeah. just a little while ago. So, and you, Eunice, I would, I would beg to differ a little bit. I, I do think it is about power. I, well, I, I was trying not to. I, we I don't was not the first to say I'm calling it a power, a power play by so, uh, certain boards, they can do a power play here. And get well, actually, it's everybody's fault that we let it get this far. We should have continued fighting a year ago in Bethel at 11 o'clock at night about how this was going to shake out. And everybody was tired and cranky and whatever, so we'll solve it later. Well, later is here, and it really has potential to impact how our how hard we're going to have to fight for school budgets going forward. Right, and that's, and that's going to be their platform tomorrow night, is they'll say, we'll solve it later. Right. I think that's exactly what they'll say. We'll just solve it later. Well, later we go down to three votes. Tomorrow night we have six votes. Later we have three. Which is and and which the last time it came up when we were in Stockbridge, you could look around the room and see we, almost, we didn't have the number of votes. No. But, uh, well, well, it was it was and it felt like the other night when we were talking about it. Right. So, and Chelsea huh? and Tombridge are were in favor of not changing right. configuration, and that was the thing that really surprised me. Because they have everything to gain. Well, no, because they're going from six to three as well. They're going from six right. to three. Right. I guess that's well. what I'm saying. But she, yeah. So it was surprising they that they had six. Yeah. Right. It was to me. Yeah, but here's a few they not. Well, and and I true. feel like we articulately outlined as much as we could um, what was sort of at stake. And I think that what I was hearing from people from Chelsea and Tunbridge was that we would assume best intentions on everyone's part, and that was okay. Um, so without them you know, sort of supporting this, we had six votes that we couldn't, we couldn't capture at that particular meeting. But and some of their board has changed, I think. Right, but those aren't the people who get to vote. And I, I, I want to point out. Or, and the people who were at the table that night yeah, the, were. Their current boards get to vote, right. and some of them are new. OK. Yeah. OK, they were voted in in March, so right. they weren't through the whole process. So. Right, what's that? Rochester and Stockbridge. Yeah, and, and uh, Chelsea. Right. They, Chelsea. Did they? So, yeah. Rochester and Stockbridge didn't have the same feeling that we have. Like, I, I, what and alarms me is that I brought this up a long time ago. Right. And yep. Gio pushed it down the road on me. He said, don't worry about it, Dorothy. We'll take care of it later. And later is here. And now I'm, we're going to get I'm it. Fighting, I'm fighting, I'm not, right. I'm not relaxing on this. I, I, no, I, I, I refuse to. I basically wouldn't shut up until we got the meeting on the 20th at the last last time we met in Stratford. You did do a good job. I, so one, one thing I'm going to need is, are, are we still, because one thing they brought they, they brought up several times is, well, we don't know how, what the new White River Board thinks about this. <laughs> I said, yes. I thought they think about country. this. So if you can reiterate your feelings about this so we can speak for you. <laughs> I assume that you guys are all in favor of this. I, I, yes, and that evening at the meeting in Stockbridge of the full board, I think I I tried my best to con convey really articulately what we needed. Um, it's difficult at times when I go to full board or executive board meetings um, because I feel like my ability to speak even is has to be granted by that board and at times it has felt like the, the, the people leading that were somewhat hostile to the message that I was bringing. But they still use you, I mean the new board, as an excuse not to vote. Oh no, can right. I just tell you, that is not you, Lisa. That's anyone who's not on that executive board. Right. If I don't do the executive right, right, board, right. I, mean, I can't speak either. Right, I understand that, but oh, it's, just, like it's it. very challenging yeah. right. to have my message to, to communicate, but I will be there tomorrow night so that should I be called upon to communicate, I, I'm ready. Is there a statement from the WRUD board that would be provided to that? I think that the WRUD board 
board, if the rest of the board supports it, um, would send the message that we are in favor of fair representation, meaning that we would maintain five or six seats on that suit, that board. Let's just say um, six seats. Six seats, yeah. 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 On the fuel board. Don't give up a moment. Uncertainty there. They're going to change the number. Uh, members. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Lisa, what are you going to, you, so you're going to vote for the, like, RTCC and the executive board and all that? Next week we have a meeting for policies, and then at that point we'll also choose RTCC board, uh, executive board, and full board representation. So restructure. Yeah. So are we meeting next week in Bethel? Yes. 6 p.m. Tuesday evening in Bethel. Um, primarily for the sake of adopting policies that need to be in place by July 1. And, and entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, we need to do executive session. I'm sorry to enter. That was close. Almost. We almost got out of here. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Desmond, I think we're set. Yeah, thank you.